or a meeting or something, I'm like always sitting there waiting, I'm like, wait, there's a whole waiting room where people are sitting <laughs> people are waiting for but, um, Thank you so much for um, taking time. I'm like, I know we're mostly at home and stuff, but still it means a lot for journalists, for a talent to be so willing to adapt to like this new normal we're in, which is- Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's definitely a shift in time right now, uh, especially, you know, with social distancing, everybody's kind of on lockdown or going back into lockdown. Some people ain't, <laughs> let's face it, some people ain't social distancing at all. No, so, no. But, uh, I was in, I'm in New York. So luckily we haven't, we've been like very, very strategic about phasing in and stuff. But at the yeah. same time, like we're like in phase three now and people are outside, like people are at bars. It's like ridiculous. I'm like, I just, I have things I want to do for the rest of the year. And Bruh. I need people to go, <laughs> need people to go. Like, just sacrifice these next 90 days, if that, and it'll be all good. We'll go back to normal. Everything will be straight, but people just ain't listening. So we just going to just sit here for a second and just adjust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so how have you been holding up during the pandemic? Like, is it getting to you yet? Are you still just like pretty cool? Um, I'm, I'm kind of, it's, it's, it's like, you know, like everything, it's kind of up and down. Sometimes I uh, wish that things, you know, would be open, you know, I could like to go out, be with my friends and, you know, nightlife and stuff like that. But then oftentimes I'm kind of realizing that I'm finding more benefit into staying at home and kind of centering myself in my work and yeah. not having too many other distractions. So there's been a lot of growth in this time as well. So um, that's been new and a change, but in terms of mentally, I just been really just journaling, uh, mm -hmm. trying to practice more meditation and also just trying to read and keep my mind focused because we can get so caught up in the news and the media and what they're talking about mm -hmm. that we end up kind of losing focus on ourselves and what we're kind of meant to, to do here. So uh, just taking new practices and trying new strides to, to stay sane. Yeah. So how did you get involved with They Come, They Go? It's such a interesting short film, um, probably one of the most different short films I've seen in a while. Yeah. How did you get involved with it? Oh man, thank you. But uh, it was, she can't. It was it was funny because uh, I knew Khadija, my co-star, for uh, mm -hmm. quite some time, and then Cameron uh, just so happened to go to her party at this at the time, and he was like, "Yo, you know, we're trying to develop this concept. We're working on this new film, and uh, you know, we need, we need a guy." And it's like, "Wait, the guy Broderick? I saw. Yo, like, is, would you, would he be down?" So we literally just um, chopped it up over coffee. Uh, one day and just discuss like you know the the concept of the film and just kind of just start jotting stuff down the next thing you know like two or three months down the line we just started really executing and we shot it for about five days straight and yeah it, that that's kind of just how it happened man it, yeah it was it was, a, it was a, a passion project so it just we just all everybody from the producers cam myself Khadija, lighting people dps we all just made our schedules work and just made it happen yeah and given that the film is mostly silent, like there's dialogue here and there, but like not mm -hmm. generally silent. So yeah. what was that experience like doing that as opposed to your prior projects? Like were you, were you filming it as silent or like, I know there's dialogue, like we just can't hear it or yeah. how, <laughs> how did that work? Well, the way, the way that worked was um, with it being a silent piece, it was really just more so focused on uh, the emotional connection between me and Khadija and stuff because silent was a lot in my opinion a lot more difficult to achieve because we can easily express ourselves verbally and uh you know talk things out but with this particular piece uh it was mainly just focused on half 90 percent communication being nonverbal. so focusing on that aspect alone and trying to kind of just navigate through the certain scenarios that were where we were in the film and the time frames that we were in the film it was really just uh for myself, it was really just kind of a, a hurdle to accomplish that because I'm not, that was my first style of film I've done, but uh, it was fun. It was, it was a new experience. Uh, very, very uh, interesting indeed. Yeah. How important was it for you um, to be a part of a project that centers two dark skinned black actors? Because that's, unfortunately, that's an anomaly right now in media. We r rarely see um, yeah. not one, but two um <laughs> two leads like, so too, too dark <laughs> <laughs> it's unfortunate but how is how is that personally for you to um take part in this because i know um when i saw when i saw the project first drop and like promos i'm like wow this is something like i wish this was like a feature link hey, yeah it was man uh i i it was a pleasure because as i said i i'm always 
I'm very pro black love, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very pro black women, especially. Mm -hmm. So to have the opportunity to actually do this on this type of project on this kind of scale where it's on Amazon and people can see it, watch it. I feel like it's a very big responsibility for us as creatives and as, as talent and as actors to, to continue to push these agendas because Hollywood isn't going to do it for us. You know, Hollywood's going to always try to micromanage how they, how they think black love should be or how it would be respectable for all audiences when that's not the case. We, we have so much dark skin black love out there. It's just not, put out there like that on TV or in movies. So uh, with this particular piece, uh, I think it was just very important that we aided to that agenda and making sure that people saw black love in a positive way, but also in a real way. Because that's really, you know, as we said, man, we know that, that there's black love out there, especially two dark skinned, uh, mm -hmm. two dark skinned people, but it's just, it's just not it's just not out there it's just not being put out there so this piece is definitely something that i hold uh, true and dear in terms of pushing that dark skin black love is just as important as all love out there yeah what ways do you think hollywood will change after the pandemic because we're even seeing now uh mm -hmm. shows are slowly coming back and they're you know it's a new world as far as even like intimate scenes. Like even a lot of the stuff that you all did in your short may be <laughs> still feeling when we can nope, go back to nope, nope. <laughs> go back to doing I know um uh one of the soap barbers, I think it's the bold and the beautiful, is I think yeah. they're the first one to come back and mm -hmm. the production told them they're either gonna have to use um mannequins <laughs> for love mm -hmm. scenes or bring their real life partner on scene yeah. and then they just like film it weirdly. So that's kind of like a a different aspect of how things are changed but overall how do you think it's going to impact creatives man it's really going to just be a timing type of thing because as you said with uh they're taking down numbers and i don't think people really understand how much hands-on things are on set like mm -hmm. with lighting dps directors script supervisors crafts and services the janitor you know then you, you have it's a whole scheme of people where we're all moving around so um my only thing is yeah okay cool bring production back but my only question if the quality is going to be the same because that the, the the necessary hands that you need on set is what makes a lot of these tvs and shoot and movie uh projects amazing because there were people involved that were doing their job so i only hope that uh in the midst of all this the the, pro the productions that do and are going forward now i just hope that it's the same type of quality that we have expected and experiences uh experienced beforehand because as i said it's it's just it's it's pointless if you can't have all the necessary hands on set you might as well just wait so yeah i'm 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 more pro waiting and getting uh, uh the show back started and stuff like that but uh if you if the show must go on then you know, we're going to have a, a, some pretty interesting experiences when we see you. So we're just going to have a, just like, is that a mannequin? Is that this? <laughs> well, because of COVID. So, yeah, yeah it's just, it's going to be different. So uh, yeah. all I can say is time will tell. Yeah. Uh, so what other projects do you have coming out? You know, we have this short film, and I know you were in Influence on mm -hmm. BET Plus not that long ago. Is there yeah. anything you should expect you in, like, later this yeah. year, despite yes. COVID? <laughs> Oh yeah, the, my new film coming out called California Love. I star in that with myself, Robert Richard, and uh, Alan Payne. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a movie that's set in the '90s and it talks about um, uh, basically the, the Bloods and the Crips coming together. I'm not going to get the whole story out because we know we're about to drop the official trailer and stuff. But um, that's another movie to look out for. It was supposed to be released uh, this year, but it's actually going to get pushed to 2021, uh, along with. I mean, I'm up for several other roles at the moment, but we don't even know if those are going to go into production or if we're going to wait till 2021. A lot of the new shows that we're getting picked up have now been on postpone or, or back on the chopping block uh, in terms of, you know, production dates, because all the new shows like shows are going like season two and so forth and so forth. Those shows are kind of getting uh, the grandfathered in to start production, which is great. But uh, for new stuff, man, it's just, I, I'm, I'm hoping that I could get back going again, but, you know, uh, we don't know how COVID's going to be. Miss Rona's out there. She's <laughs> out there. <laughs> very out there. Very out there. I was seeing all these, um, everyone was posting about how uh, there's like a pool in Compound in Atlanta and like yeah. how everybody's like 
Ms. Rollins just sitting there watching everybody at this party. <laughs> it's like, just like lurking, like lurking. She just, at she, just, she just in the window seal, just watching all the fuckers. <laughs> yeah. um, so I know that, um, of course, you have this film, um, mm-hmm. and you're mostly transitioning a lot more to acting. Mm-hmm. Now, what advice would you give to aspiring actors? You know, now is the perfect time since we're all yeah. in quarantine to improve on your craft and yeah. um, just seek out more things now that we're like kind of hunkered down. What advice would you give to uh, anyone trying to break through? I would say, well, there's a few things you can do right now. Um, a real big thing is understanding the tone of the things that you want to go out for, like comedy and stuff like that. There's so many different tones where there's sitcom and there's, you know, then you have the rom-coms and stuff like that, how you say different things and understanding how certain directors direct and understanding how certain writers write. Just understanding those little different mediums helps a lot. So I would just recommend people watching different shows that they see themselves, that they could see themselves being on or they think that that's their type of acting, their type of humor. Watch different shows like that. Same thing with drama mm-hmm. and stuff. There's so many, you know, there's, we we're, Thank goodness we have the streaming platforms right now. We can go and watch certain things from Shonda Rhimes back to the first season of How I Get Away with Murder. Then you can also go to the new stuff like Dave on Hulu that has another another stone of comedy. Mm-hmm. So I would just tell people to just uh, research and watch as much stuff as you can, just so you can kind of get an understanding of the tone. Also, pick up a few books. You know, Amazon is still ordering. Thank God. So <laughs> yeah. I would tell them to pick up the power of the actor. Kind of breaks down how to discover a character and discover uh, certain things that are going on in the script or how you're performing or how you want to deliver. That's a very good book to pick up called The Power of the Actor. And then also just to really uh, hone in and practice monologues, you know, practice memorizing uh, certain things. It doesn't have to be anything like from from Shakespeare or anything like that. You could just pick up a random, just pick up something randomly online, mock scripts, mock scripts or whatever, go over it with a few friends and, you know, start practicing that way. Those are really good ways to stay sharp as well and also learn your body. So uh, I would say those are a few things that you can do at the moment to help your craft and to when things do get open up for you, like looking for auditions, you'll stay on it and be sharp. Yeah, so what would be your pitch to get people to, um watch they come they go on amazon if someone gets like you know quarantine night quarantine and chill and they just look for something to watch what would you what would be your picture to get them to watch uh, this uh i would say uh i'd say people should watch they come they go on amazon because it delivers a much broader perspective of what love is and what loves in your 20s is it's something that's real it's organic it's something that you should definitely uh, pay attention to only because of the fact that not only is it black love, but it's also highlights the ups and downs of what of our experiences being young and in love. And uh, also there's just a lot of art. It's a very, it's a very artistic piece too. So it's shot beautifully. And we also have a lot of uh, different nuanced things in there that people can relate to. So it's a very cool, relatable piece. And I think people will enjoy it. Gotcha, gotcha. And one last question. I know that um, there's this like running comparison on Twitter that <laughs> you look like Beyonce. <laughs> and I just have to, since I'm at to come to the source and ask, mm-hmm. when and where did those comparisons first begin? I want, I want Listen, to- I'll tell you the whole story. The, what <laughs> happened was uh, we were on the On the Run 2 concert last year, mm-hmm. me and my girlfriend, and Beyonce was just on stage. She had left. And I was like, okay, babe, the concert's about to be done. We should probably 86 this before mm-hmm. it gets crazy because you know how it's going to catch an Uber and all that. She's like, okay, great, let's up. So we get up and go. People in the stands all around were still chanting Beyonce, and she was mm-hmm. not on stage, okay? <laughs> I'm like, yo, this is crazy, babe. Beyonce isn't even on stage, and people are still out here screaming her name. It's like, yeah, babe, because it's Beyonce. I'm like, no, <laughs> babe, they're looking at me. <laughs> I'm Beyonce. She was like, oh God, you're so stupid. So the next day I couldn't even, I I slept on it. I was like, dang, this is crazy. This whole time, that's what's been, that's what it is. That's what people think. They think I look like Beyonce. So I went (laughs) on Twitter. I was like, dang, y'all, this is crazy. Like I was at the On The Run tour and I heard you guys scream Beyonce, but I realized y'all were just talking to me. So then everybody was like, oh my God, I see the comparison. And 
yeah, that's just kind of how it happened. So I don't say I look like Beyonce. It was a realization. Everybody, everybody, just, everybody just says it. Everybody says it. I'm like, that's that's not that's not something I put on myself. That's just what it is, and that's okay. Like people just need to calm down. I understand <laughs> it. The nose, the eyes, the hips. I get it. It's all there. But I'm broader kind of. I'm glad that you made that statement now. So now anytime anyone says you look at Beyonce, like okay, I'm not saying it. Other people. I never said it. You guys did. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious that's hilarious but um thank you so much for chatting with me today um i really wanted to cover cover this film um especially now since where people have time to you know check yeah. it and it's like so readily available on amazon everybody has amazon prime so oh yeah it should be it easy for people to just and it's 14 minutes like it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a cool little it's a cool short man as i said it's a passion project all black cast all black production you know and we just really uh as I said, we just really just put our, our best of efforts and just our energy and time into it. And I'm happy that it's being well received. You know, as an artist, I'm kind of like, I, I personally don't like to watch my own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but when people come back and they DM me or they at me and they say, hey, bro, like I watched the film, loved it, amazing. You know, I was like, oh, cool, thank you. So I'm just, as long as people watch it and enjoy it, I'm happy. What did you think about the film? I, I didn't, at first, I, I didn't know that it was going to end the way it did, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind I mean, I kind of figured that out as, you know, it was broken up, like, each each part had its own, like, theme, yeah. and then when I saw the theme Fear, I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is about, <laughs> it's about to go downhill, um, it's and a then little, I was like, it's I was a like, little thought, rabbit hole. Yeah, and I was like, I thought it was going to be reconciliation, but I'm like, then I'm like, it's only 14 minutes, so I mean, like, all of it can't be there, I mean, Maybe y'all could do a, a second short in season. <laughs> we've, been, we've been talking yeah, about trying to do some other projects of like revolved around it where it continues into another storyline or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, for what it for what it was and for what we did, uh, it definitely took people from what it seemed. It took it was kind of unexpected, kind of like how it kind of just merged into yeah. both being reality but also kind of like artistic at the same time the way it was shot so yeah. uh, everybody has their own experiences and takes what takes whatever they can from it yeah. uh, but overall i'm just happy people have just been enjoying it yeah absolutely absolutely well thank you so much for chatting with me um of course man yeah i'll send your pr the all the links and stuff um uh, when everything goes out cool and hopefully people will check it out and enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> if they do cool man as i just said man we there's so much there's so much stuff to watch out there we just yeah. want to uh progress and uh and show black love on the screen so it's all love yeah thank you so much for chatting with me anytime brother thank you yeah hope you enjoy the rest of your day you too brother